inside Alexandra's ship. Hello, new pilot. This would probably be a great time for introductions. Sure. My name is Carmichael. As you may have guessed, I am the ship's AI and I'm available to lend a hand. Thanks, but I'm good. Of that, I have no doubt. Alexandra. Alexandra, I'm merely taking a moment to draw your attention to the open doors of the asteroid base landing bay. Already on it. Terrific. However... Asteroid base. I'm a marshal with the post office and... You are probably already well aware, but we are being fired upon from the base. Asteroid base. Repeat. I am not a marshal with the post office. Fired on us again. They are a testy bunch. Anyway, as I was saying about the landing bay... Probably going to lose the side view mirrors on this. Would I be correct in assuming that you are attempting to land? You would be, yes. As you are undoubtedly aware, the doors of the bay are partially closed, which has choked off the entry a tad. I'm aware. You therefore very likely already know that I won't entirely fit. I do, and I'm sorry for what's about to happen. From your unusually high velocity for docking, can I assume that you intend to have bits of me tear off as you ram on through with the rest of me? You can. That will negate the warranty. Thank you, Carmichael. Would you like to know about my safety features? Nope. All right. Impact in five, four, three, two. Collision with support beam imminent. Careening off the support toward a small vessel. Collision with a small vessel imminent. Plowing through the small vessel. Collision with... We have hit the back wall. I've been in a ton of crashes, but that was the first one with a play-by-play. -play. Super Lux. This is Instar Automated Response. I have received a signal that there has been an accident. Is everything all right? Instar? What's Instar? Part of the computerized intergalactic assistance package purchased with this vessel, which has been reported stolen. Are you the thief? I'm the commandeerer. We are currently in the process of notifying the local constabulary. So sorry to interrupt, but I thought you might like to know that a group of armed personnel are pouring out of the hatchway and seem like they are about to open... Oh, they have indeed opened fire. You might be interested to know that this ship comes with a Gatling cannon. I'm aware, Carmichael. Thank you. I will be making use of the cannon if you could charge it up. My pleasure. I've taken the liberty of making some anti-personnel adjustments. I think you'll appreciate the tweaks. Thank you, Carmichael. Pardon me for a second, Star. Since they are running like scalded dogs back through the hatch, may I suggest some mortar fire? Excellent choice, Carmichael. But my point has been made. Very good, ma'am. Hello. Marshal. This is the post office. I know, Ted. What's up? We've got Instar on the line. They want to coordinate on the pursuit of a stolen vessel. Sure. Put him through. Marshal? Speaking. We have disengaged the warp drive of a stolen vessel. However, there seems to have been an accident. We have the coordinates. The thief is on the other line. What took you so long? Pardon, ma'am? To call. The vessel has been off-world for a little while now, hasn't it? We called right away. However, from my understanding, there was some confusion or concern on the part of the post office about the legality of you specifically being called in. Why? No badge, but you're the closest. Seriously? Can you take it from here, Marshal? Hold on, Instar. Before you go, are you able to pipe me through the vessel? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I'm on the scene right now. Ted, it's some kind of illegal asteroid base. Is backup possible? How do you know it's illegal? They shot at me. That could be salvage crew or miners. Either can legally protect their claim with lethal force. There was no salvage tug on hand. The miners love me. They always think I'm delivering a stripogram. Well, most people do initially, but miners especially. My point is, your actions could be viewed as trespassing. I identified myself as a marshal. With no badge? They didn't ask to see one. Still. And you were in a stolen vehicle. Commandeered. And they didn't know that. It wasn't a post office cruiser. 
Instar, I'll need a lift. Do you folks handle that? Definitely. It is part of the concierge service, which can be extended to law enforcement. That is so lux. Let the driver know it's a bit of a rough crowd here. Will do. Oh, wait. I've received notification that the warranty is void. And? Yes, sorry, Marshal. I feel just awful about this, but I had to notify Instar concerning how you rode roughshod over proper docking procedures. Goodbye. I really do feel terrible about the way things turned out for you. Ted? Yes? You heard all that? Yes. And you can't send backup? The only one available out there would be you. Super. I want my response time logged. You caused the accident. I was called. I responded. <sighs> Fine. I apologize for interrupting. I just thought you'd want to know that there are armed personnel pouring into the landing bay once again. Thank you, Carmichael. I'd want to know that. Shall I ready the Gatling cannon? Yes, Carmichael. Thank you. Would you like the settings optimized for mowing them down or driving them back? Uh, driving them back. Thank you, Carmichael. Ted? Yes? Did you hear that? Made to order. Seriously, how lux can you get? Inside the lounge of the BGO spacecraft. Our flight to Sixkill gives me an opportunity to share some personal insights about Alexandra. By personal, do you mean not on record? I mean anecdotal. We served together. I'd appreciate hearing whatever you'd be willing to share. Are you sure? Upon meeting Alexandra, you may have misgivings about her leading the mission into Corfu, but I want to assure you that she is unparalleled in the theater. Why would you believe that I'd have misgivings? Her skill level and instincts should have placed her in an elite fighting team, but her unconventionality and lack of discipline to work within a unit kept her in the regular forces. Alexandra was perhaps best summed up by her commanding officer, who referred to her as uh, the idiot savant of guerrilla warfare. An idiot? Savant. Was that a term of endearment or derision? Or both? Frustration, so both. And she's leading the mission? It's best that way. So I'm entrusting my life to, and the Bureau trusts the success of this mission, to an idiot savant inside the airlock of the Carmichael ship. While I'm in here knocking heads together, you should run a diagnostic. Prudent, ma'am. You did smash me around quite a bit. I'm all about the prudence. Airlock pressurized in three, two, one. Basewide evacuation is now in effect. Basewide evacuation. Is everything all right? I hear gunfire and fisticuffs. You hear this? Through the helmet. The suit is connected to the ship. Would you like to learn about its many other features? That is so lux. Yeah, I would. Just not now. I'm busting up the welcome committee hardcore if you get my drift. I do indeed, ma'am. On board the spaceship with Jane and Bronson en route to Sixkill. When the War of Insurrection began, I was in seminary school. That's unexpected. I left to join the war effort. On the eve of my first tour, I was questioning that decision. I wasn't sure if I was up to what was going to be asked of me. Young and afraid, I went to my CO, who, by the way, was the same CO who referred to Alexandra as an idiot savant. And I asked him if he had any advice for surviving the war. I honestly didn't know what I was expecting him to say. I figured he was going to reference some basic training drill, but he didn't. Instead, he pointed out Alexandra and told me that while I was in the theater, I should stay as close to her as possible, and when I was on leave, I should get as far away as I could. I took his advice. And you're passing that advice on to me? I am. How is it possible that you were a young man when you met her? Has she not aged? Do you want the official explanation or the mythology? I'm not one for lore, Mr. Rice. The official version, then. For now, at least. Alexandra who? She doesn't officially exist. She's a marshal. That's not a great profession for someone seeking to fly under the radar. 
Oh, she officially exists. Any other stance would be futile. She couldn't ghost if she wanted to, and she'll never want to. Officially, the BGO has no dealings with the woman because she is nothing special, a marshal like any other. Which she is not? Which she is not. The mythology, then. Are you familiar with the term apotheosis? I can't say that I am. It is defined as the elevation of a person to godhood. And it applies to this situation how? Despite what your first impressions tell you, Alexandra is not to be trifled with. She is much more than she seems. Ominous. What is she? The mythological demigoddess of Evermore. <laughs> the living goddess folktale? I'm trying to be open-minded here, Mr. Rice. Let's agree that she has not aged. And let's also agree that the BGO has requested her help in getting you into and out of Corfu, a fortress situated within a Dyson swarm. <laughs> All right. There must be something to the woman. I once spent a great deal of time with the priestess from Evermore, and she too had advice, which I am also passing on to you. One of Alexandra's own? Yes. First, do not make the mistake of projecting your own limitations onto her. And second, one should regard the goddess with admiration and gratitude, tempered by a sensible amount of rational fear. Inside the asteroid base. Folks, you probably don't want to evacuate into an asteroid storm. In a boulder fight, you kind of want to be in the biggest one. You seem new here. No time yet for orientation. Brand new. what I miss? Evacuation Protocol 4 means they're preparing to blow silo fill. Alexandra! Jeepers, hold your horses, would you, Tara? I'm trying to have discourse with a civilian. It's a martial community relations moment. Who are you talking to? There's no easy way to say this. I'm talking to a five-year-old girl spread across space and time. Her name is Tara. We go back quite a ways. That's... Uh, that's nice. Skittish. Alexandra. Yeah, yeah. She's in Hello? It's nice that the future hasn't become all about pocket doors. There's just more dramatic production value to entering a room by swinging a door open. I know what you mean. Crap. Ignore that. Crap. Hello? I'm coming in. Why? The room is empty. Then who's talking? The room's thermostat. Thermostats don't make idle conversation. And they notoriously hate hung doors, owing them to messing with the room's clean lines, which leads to uneven airflow and results in thermal pockets. I'm not here to harm you. I'm actually here to rescue you. This place is about to get blown. I can see your feet. <laughs> Hello, thermostat. Snickering because I said blown? After saying hung. <laughs> you can see me? Yes, thermostat. I can. That's Miss Thermostat. Nope. It could be. But it ain't. You have huge boobs. You have no filter. No, I do not. It says so in my file. File? What kind of file? The encrypted kind. But I hacked it. My name is Alexandra. I'm a marshal and superhero. Fiddlehead. I'm a navigator, engineer, and mortal. Do you see a little red-headed girl in a dress? Do you? Yes. Her name is Tara. Hello. Do you see a little unicorn? No. Neither do I. Sure, her name is Tara and... Protocol 4. Countdown sequence to commence. It's been great, but I'll be going. We can't. Well, we can, but it will be in a bit. I need to fix my ship, and we didn't part on the best of terms. I have a ship. Small thing? Parked in the bay? It's not that small, but yes. Yeah, you don't have a ship. What? You have a shipwreck. How? A lot of strange stuff goes down in space. It got randomly wrecked? Did you see anything? I definitely did see that it was wrecked. I definitely did not see a note on the windshield. Anyway, as I was saying about Terra... But didn't you say that you were rescuing me? I am. But this place is about to blow up and we have no way to leave. And you're just fussing with the... What are you doing? It's not about to blow up. It's about to get blown. There won't be an explosion. When you want to destroy a place secretly, silophil is an option. A secret lab would use silophil. Silophil? 
That sounds low-key and non-threatening. I know, right? Nothing horrific death-sounding about it at all. Horrific death? Why should that be what it sounds like? A chemical vapor is released. It soaks into everything. After that, a second chemical is pumped in. There is a rapid chemical reaction and the vapor turns to stone. And in the presence of silicone, it goes bonkers and ends up filling up every nook and cranny. We'll be encased in stone? We'll be turned to stone and encased in stone. We'll be statues? Like... A Medusa thing? More like being killed in a horrifically painful way while simultaneously being buried in a few tons of stone while hurtling off to who knows what. Perhaps to be pulled into some cataclysmic gravity well out there and crushed so intensely that our atoms burst. No two ways about it. Space is a lot of bad neighborhoods. I bet blowing up ain't seeming so bad. Inside the private spaceship, en route to Sixkill. If you don't like the demigoddess explanation... How would you account for her lack of aging? Science? There is some kind of science involved. Assertion without proof is faith by any other name. Sir, ma'am, I have the Bureau on the line. They managed to somewhat descramble the video from the Invictus. You didn't mention a video, Mr. Rice. It was a garbled mess and seemed irrelevant to the mission. Apparently, it's rather disturbing. Put the call through. You have something for us, Dr. Hansen? Something is the word for it. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, no sound, I'm afraid. What the hell was that? Wait. And that? Was it chasing the other one? Oh, they're both running away from the same thing. W was the Invictus boarded? We don't know. Current conjecture is that is the crew. Or rather, what the crew has become. Skin stretched on bone, and a phantom version of the same thing. They look like ghouls. What the hell happened to them? We don't know, but we theorize it had an epicenter, and prevailing opinion is that it was likely in the engine room. Could radiation have caused this? Not that we know of. How did you come to the conclusion that there was an epicenter, and why the engine room? The video shows two mutation types. The theory is that something happened in the engine room, and the closer a crew member was to the epicenter, the more affected they were, with the ghosts having been at ground zero. Ground zero to what? What could have happened in the engine room? Few know this, but the preliminary research for the interdimensional drive was prompted by unexpected and unshared findings in the Collider experiments. Collider? The Hellion Gatic Collider? Yes. Hell's Gate? We refer to it as merely the HG Collider, but yes, that's the one. The unexpected findings he's speaking of are holes blown out of our universe. Holes? Quantum anomalies that we refer to as fissures. Temporary in nature, it was all speculative and as such kept under wraps. The government didn't want anyone worrying needlessly. Under the leadership of a Dr. Horace Kane, a covert research team was set up to investigate. They were tasked with connecting to parallel universes. But what was kept from most of the team were indications that we had connected not only with parallel universes, but also alternate dimensions, entirely different realities. Kept from them? And is what we just saw the result? I'm getting to that. One of the fissures wouldn't close and, furthermore, could be leveraged to generate other quantum fissures, those being temporary. The log indicates that after the opening of the permanent fissure, several of those closely involved started to have psychological issues. Depression, anxiety, but in more extreme cases, there were psychotic breaks and one instance of night terrors which resulted in death. Because of the fissure? No causal relationship was established, and Dr. Kane continued his work. <laughs> his work of poking temporary holes out of the universe? This isn't an interrogation, Lieutenant, and Dr. Hansen is merely the messenger. Yes, sorry. It's all so horrifically callous. I understand your concerns. The poking of holes was a prelude to exploration. 
The Collider, along with the Fisher, were put on board the Invictus to generate interdimensional access points. Hell's Gate is the engine? It's the looking glass. The Invictus just steps through. Into madness so disturbing that it kills people. And now it's back.